really what I try to get people to think about is food is medicine. It's really as powerful as a prescription drug. And when you start to think about it that way, it really helps you make that decision. Should I have a bag of potato chips or should I have an orange? And a lot of times people think, uh, like, you know, how can food cause cancer? You know, part of it is when we eat unhealthy, we gain weight. And we know the role of being overweight with your risk of cancer. It's a complicated process that really revolves around inflammation and immune response. And if you're not eating healthy, you're not going to get those important vitamins and minerals. If you're eating all the processed foods, the, the salamis, the pastrami's, all of these things that are filled you know, with nitrates and, and other aspects that, that make it tasty are not inherently healthy. And when you think about how do they make all these processed foods, they're, they're stripping away, you know, all the healthy aspects. And it's never one daily choice that's going to increase your risk. But what I tell people is it's your choices that are made on a daily basis over time that impact your risk. Yeah, a quote that I like that hints towards that idea is one hot day doesn't make a summer. Mm-hmm. a entire string of hot days makes the summer and you know that's the power of consistency working for you or consistency with bad habits working against you right with the balance of because there's no person in the world really that is just going to drop everything on the weekend just going to continue mm-hmm. to eat no sugar and you know not overeat and just completely eliminate alcohol there are some people like that, but for a lot of people, there still needs to be some moderation and some balance. How can people balance that with keeping their cancer prevention in mind? Part of it includes doing an accurate assessment yourself. What I find is, you know, people will always say to me, oh, Dr. White, I eat healthy, you know, I eat salads or, you know, I I try to eat a healthy breakfast, but they're significantly overweight. And diet, what we eat, plays a big role. I often ask people to do a food journal just for a week. And I tell them to ignore the first two days because they're trying to behave that day (laughs) and and don't want to put in bad things. And then I say, you have to write down everything that you put in your mouth. And then you find out there's a lot of snacks, there's a lot of treats. And I said to a patient the other day, I said, that doesn't mean that you can never have ice cream, but you just can't have it every day. And she's like, oh, I don't have it every day. And I said, well, how often do you have it? She's like, "Mm, probably every other day. Well, that's probably too much when you're overweight. You know, here in the United States, only about 25% of people eat fish one day a week. The rest don't eat fish at all. I mean, it's staggering the number of people that go to fast food restaurants every day. So that's the problem that we're having, Brock. There's not an accurate assessment of what you yourself are doing. And then there's this sense, um, I don't want to deny myself anything. That That's too hard to do, that I can never have potato chips, or I can never have ice cream, or I can never have a piece of cake. That's not what we're saying. We're saying you can't have it most days of the week. I want you to have more healthy days than unhealthy days in terms of what you eat. But most people aren't like that. Yeah, I think that fish consumption statistic is down to you know when you bring up fast foods there's not many restaurants fast food restaurants where Mm -hmm. you can get quick and convenient food because so many people are time poor these days especially you know when you throw kids into the mix as Mm -hmm. i'm experiencing it just kind of gets Mm -hmm. you know everything's so compressed but yeah there's not many fish options and even though that's only one pillar of nutrition it's still something that can help contribute uh to to better health so with nutrition Eating a healthy diet is what a lot of people will say. Personal trainers will say it. Physicians will say it. Doctors will say it. Can you give some practical advice of kind of what that can look like? Because some people just say, oh, yeah, I'm eating healthy. And then they're eating, Mm -hmm. you know, granola bars and, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff that we know that is probably 
better than eating a chocolate bar, but there could be other better options too. So how can we kind of guide them in the right direction? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. They don't realize that, you know, how they bind the granola together is is a molasses or a sugar. Um, So I do ask people to look at food labels. Not that they have to study labels or you may know how many carbs you had yesterday. I couldn't tell you that. But what I can do and ask patients to do, when you're looking at different yogurts, when one yogurt has 20 grams of sugar because it's um, you know French vanilla flavoring and one has six or one has 15 grams of protein and one has two, you know what the better choice is by just comparing. And what I often tell people is it's as important what you include as well as what you exclude. So you have to look at both. So you have to say, I'm going to reduce my consumption of red meat. We know that the studies have consistently shown an association between red meat and cancer, particularly colon cancer. Again, it doesn't mean you can ever have red meat, but how do you reduce it to maybe once or twice a week? How do you replace one hamburger or hot dog or sandwich with, as we just talked about, fish, loaded with powerful antioxidants, which we know reduces cancer risk, as well as lower in calories. So automatically, you're going to lose weight. How do you have more fruits and vegetables? Here in the United States, most people do not eat fruit on a daily basis. So how can you figure out a way to consume it? At least one meal with one meal, maybe it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It'd be better if you had it, you know, two of them, but I'd settle for at least one. How do you have more, you know, whole wheat and low fat dairy? Those are the things that you want to include on a daily basis. And then you want to exclude, you know, the processed foods, the saturated fats. When I say to people, all those sugary drinks, right? We can so many calories by what we drink and we don't even think about it. You should replace everything with basically water and coffee is good. And we can come back to, <laughs> to that as long as it's not I'd like to touch the, on the frappuccinos. Um, but those are some of the changes that you want to make. And what I always say to patients, Brock, is I'm not as concerned as where you are next week or three weeks from now. I'm concerned where you are two years from now, five years from now. Because if you keep doing what you're doing, it's going to catch up to you over time. And there's so many choices out there. You have to find what you enjoy. And too often people will say to me, oh, Dr. White, I don't like fish. Oh, Dr. White, I don't like beans. I had a patient say to me, I don't like water. And I knew what she meant. <laughs> she liked the flavor of it. But, but the point was, you have a young child now. When they get older, you're not going to say, oh, you can't. You can't ha-, you know, if they say they don't like it, you're going to tell them to keep trying it. You're going to find different ways to enjoy it. So there are ways uh, to do that for yourself, just as you would uh, for your children. When I first thought of doing a podcast in 2019, I wrote down everything that I wanted to achieve with the show. And one thing I never wrote down was to spam you with ads of products that I never really used myself. However, I did write down that I wanted to grow it as big as possible and have as many interesting people on the show as I could. To help make that happen, all I ask is that you leave a review on the podcast platform that you're listening to this episode on and share it with someone that you know it will benefit. If you want to support myself even further, and more importantly, your body transformation, and are interested in having me as your coach to help you achieve the results that you just can't seem to achieve on your own, you can visit teambrockashby.com to see what program fits you best. Yeah, personally, I put frozen kale and frozen spinach into smoothies yeah. because I, I, I know that, I I've, that I fall into a category of a person that doesn't really thoroughly love vegetables. Mm-hmm. I, I like roast potatoes, roast sweet potato, roast pumpkin, that kind of stuff. Most people can get yeah. on board with that. But to sit down and eat a bowl of broccoli or you know eat the broccoli yeah. on the side, I'm just kind of not a big fan of that. But then there are ways like putting them in a smoothie. I love the that, frozen idea because yeah, then it doesn't actually, go to waste. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... And, you know, that's why I also love smoothies. And, okay, I may be sacrificing a bit of the fiber because, mm-hmm. I'm, because I'm blending it all up. But at least I'm still getting a ton of things that I probably wouldn't really sure. eat if I'm not having a smoothie. So I find that that has been a big win for me. Um, would you say that with nutrition? So a, a, a lot of the things that you're talking about, mm-hmm. my personal training brain and my nutrition brain is going, well, 
ultimately what we're doing here is looking for foods that are nutrient dense, um, probably less hyper palatable, still tasty, but not yeah. extremely tasty that your brain's like, I need more, I need more, I need more, mm -hmm. which leads to overeating. So would you say that the nutrition advice would be, I guess, mainly reducing calories because that has an impact on, on their waistline and then yeah. having, and then being at a healthier weight is better for uh, mm -hmm. cancer risk than just the foods alone? We definitely have to be at a healthier weight. And we're going to talk about activity and exercise, but I'll tell you, most of our weight is dictated by what we eat. Exercise has enormous health benefits, but you're going to lose weight by changing what you eat. And we used to think a calorie is a calorie, um, whether it's from fat or it's from you know carbohydrates, but that's not quite true because we know that some foods are healthier than others. So it is about calories in but also combined with calories out. But again, it's that what you include as well as what you exclude. So you can't say, I'm going to eat kale, I'm going to eat broccoli, and then I'm going to have chocolate bars at night as a dessert because they're going to zero each other out. What I really focus on with patients are, are finding those foods that they enjoy. As you said, those nutrient-dense foods because that's going to make them feel full. That's going to release something called leptin and ghrelin, which is going to help you feel satisfied so you won't overeat. But you still have to have a plate that is full of nutrients, that is full of antioxidants, that's going to make you feel good and live longer. None of us really feel good after a, a high carbohydrate uh, you know, dinner or something with a lot of sugar. You have to have that balance, particularly as you know, protein uh, and fiber. Yeah, fiber is a big one that I've been thinking about lately, and also kind of changing my mind in terms of what I recommend to clients. And I'm not a doctor by any means, but I I do look at a lot of mm -hmm. things to do with with nutrition and how it has an impact on our life. And I used to be very pretty bro, if you know what I mean. Like I was just mm -hmm. like macros are the only thing that counts calories are the only thing that counts back in 2019 i did something called the uh i called it the 30 day ice cream challenge where i actually ate ice cream every day but still lost weight and i i, I didn't just eat ice cream i had the rest of my diet mm -hmm. normal foods the the healthy smoothies and you know rice and i'm not sure where we're going here brock kind of but go on <laughs> yeah 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 i know <laughs> i'm teasing I, I guess what i'm saying is so i just had dessert every night i had ice cream every night and mm -hmm. i lost weight it was to prove a point that you know uh moderation can you know you can still have something here and there and still lose weight but now looking back at it i'm like well is that really the best advice to be giving because who can really stop at the amount of ice cream that i was having and then stopping and also is this great advice to say hey guys you can have ice cream every day and lose weight and even though it proves a point that calories and macros matter in terms of body composition and losing weight what does it do for your long-term longevity and yeah. things like cancer risk and things like that. So I kind of, I went from this perspective, like only calories matter, but now I'm, and, and I think everyone. It's the quality in, of the calories. Yes. It's the I th quality. Yes. Yeah. I think and you, everyone in the and you exercise spaces. a lot. So I'd have to yeah. monitor what you were doing at that time with exercise. I mean, we have to remember, and I should say cancer is primarily a disease of aging, but not completely, meaning most cancers occur when we get older. We're starting to see cancer at an earlier age, but it's really a issue of a problem with cell division, meaning your cells make a mistake when they divide. And instead of having a normal cell, you have a cancer cell. So the issue is what's causing it to make these errors in cell division. And there's lots of things that do that. But we also think the food that we eat that often results in being overweight impacts immune function, impacts cell division. And that's what's causing us to increase our risk for cancer. <laughs> 